my name is Rashid from VK Makes and I'm a sustainable weaver. I also spin some of my materials, so I work from local wool and uh, bust fibers like flax and nettle fiber and these are some of my cushions. So they're a, a blend of um, local wool and um, nettle fiber dyed with uh, walnut naturally dyed and I also produce some of my own nettle fiber. Okay. Um, being sustainable is not just something I apply to my crafts, it's also part of our lifestyle. So we grow our own vegetables, we live in an eco house and I'm also producing uh, some of my own nettle fibre and that's what it looks like when it's processed. And I'm also spinning this, so this is my, some of my own um, homespun nettle and um, I've also I've got very kind friends who spin some of this material for me and that's of course a lot finer and as you can see metal fiber really spins up to a very very fine material quite nice I also spin it with wool that might be a little bit more easy for people that just um, start spinning because nettle fiber is quite fine and slippery so it can pull apart quite easily when you spin it so in a little bit of wool for example just adding a little bit of um, local wool will make it a little bit easier to spin nettle fiber to start with and still makes a very very nice yarn and you don't have to spin it you can actually also just create, just I say, you can create cordage because nettle is so fine. Uh, it also makes very fine cordage and um, that is actually fine enough for embroidery or craft projects like wild jewellery. And you can of course make the cordage a little bit more coarse and that's a very quick way. And if you want to find out about that, there's lots of information on the internet, how to make a string or cordage from nettle fiber or nettle stems. Uh, and that's a wonderful, very quick way to produce some garden string. For example, if you want to tie up your veg, or if you're a vegan pet owner or organic pet owner and just want to tie a couple of bundles of hay. So it's all amazing things you can do with nettles. Right now it's April and in April uh, nettle is good for eating so you can collect the nettle tops. I would discard the stems and really only eat uh, the top leaves, uh, nothing larger than two inches and that's okay for kind of I'd say in our area uh, mid-May. Do not eat any uh, nettle tops or nettle leaves uh, once nettles have gone into flower. The chemistry changes, it gets very hard to digest and then that's a bit counterproductive to what's otherwise a very, very nutritious food. So uh, nettle becomes viable for fiber end of May, mid of June. I usually wait a little bit longer, make sure that the wildlife had their feet. Nettle is very important for the local wildlife, feeds the most iconic butterflies, lots of moths, insects, and once the seeds are formed, lots of birds, uh, seed-eating birds, and you want it to be tall anyway, so about five foot, five and a half foot to start with. That means you get a proper fiber yield. So basically the fiber sits in the stem, and if you wanted to make string, that is a very quick affair of simply collecting the nettles with gloves, of course, at this stage the nettles still sting, and a strip of the leaves, and that gets rid of the sting, because all the little stinging hairs actually sit along the stem and below the leaves, and once they're stripped off, they're perfectly safe to touch, unless you're allergic to bee sting, because some of the um, acid that forms the sting is very similar to the uh, acid bees use in their sting uh, or if you just have uh, skin that's easily irritated. Other than that um, you should be able to then handle the nettle stems and then simply strip off um, the outer bust and twist it and that's a very easy way um, just to make string from fibers. So I collect the nettle stems and I dry them and then I break them. Um, so this is a dried nettle and uh, the stem is split open and then I simply break the inner woody piece off 
and you can use the uh, woody bits for your compost, that's great. Um, you can use it for paper making, there's still you can use it for animal straw, there's still a lot of uses. It's uh, such a zero waste plant because I think, I don't know if I mentioned, it's also a fantastic dye plant. So the leaves give a nice green and the roots give a yellow. Um, it can be a little bit insipid, so I think the general rule is usually that you have 100% fiber to 100% dye stuff. With nettle, I top it up. I give it a 200% nettle to 100% um, fabric or yarn, whatever you want to dye. And uh, so once I've broken the outer woody pith off, I get nettle straw. When I do this myself, I use larger strands, but this is easier to demonstrate. And um, so this is my metal straw. And you only need very simple tools to process this. And then with a blunt table knife or kitchen knife, you can just scrape the bust off. And you can see how the bust comes off and reveals the fiber layer. And this is how the fiber comes out. Lovely little curls. So that is the fiber layer. Okay. And once you've done this for a bit, and you can see here I used uh, initially a bigger bundle and uh, longer strands. I just used the short ones for demonstration. You get something like this, which is then the scraped fiber. You only need to separate the fibers for a bit. Separates them out. Just like this. And then you do it like hair, you start from the outer tips and move towards the inner bit of your strand. Now you can see how it becomes this very silky fine fiber. And once you've done that for a little while, it starts to look like this. Very fine. And then it can be spun like wool. And this is what it looks like. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this little demo. I hope you enjoyed learning that uh, nettle is actually a wonderful fiber plant. And if you want to know more about it, of course, uh, the uh, next edition of the Permaculture magazine contains my article about nettle fiber processing, so you can read up about it. That's the edition number 108 for the summer. Thank you very much for watching and happy nettle foraging. Bye.